and you start before you start something like this you should know who you're talking to you should know who you're talking to right like you should do your research most yeah. definitely you know like you should know the guy on the other side of the table the guy on the other side of mic who they are what they bring to the table you know what i'm saying look i want i want to start you know i think you, you started recording this right sure recording all right i want to start by you know thanking you for coming down here you know you drove you drove down from philly yeah to come to- do this Hour and 40 minutes, my yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I appreciate you, bro. You already know, I, man. I really do. That that shows a lot of, um, it just shows a lot of character. Yeah. And who you are as a person. And I reached out to you, you know, to do this because I have little to no knowledge on how to do it. Right. And you are an audio engineer. Yeah. You know, that's what you do. That's like, what I do. But, you know, been doing it for about five years you, every Sunday. Yeah, but like like we talked about earlier, you're not on the Joe Rogan wave. No. Like you've been doing this for your church. You went to school for it. You're an audio engineer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So in my mind, I thought I need to be more vocal about what it is that we're doing as a business. And then also, I feel like these conversations, documenting them, I mean, they live on forever. They're they're, they're the evergreen, man. The evergreen. So basically for anybody that's listening to this thing for the first time that don't know who is the guy on the other side of the table here that I'm talking to, let them know, man, who who are you, what it is that you do. Uh, My my name is Muhammad Ismail. I own Cap Swag stores and uh, an online site uh, along with multiple retail locations down the shore. The, the online site is operated by me and my business partner, Phil Chahet. And, uh, you know, we've been in business for a few years and, you know, we just consider ourselves builders. It's what we do. We just want to build and build a better life for us, for our family, for our, our staff members, for the people involved. So that, wow. that's who we are. Awesome. Awesome. So Cap Swag, is it CapSwag.com? Yeah. yeah. So initially... You know, I'm going to keep it real with you. It's funny that you ask about the name, right? Because the name started off as a joke, mm. honestly, right? So I'm over here. You know, my wife is pregnant at the time, and we're, we're having our firstborn kid. And, you know, in, in my mind, I'm thinking, I got to get, the, you know, I got to get this shit together. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got a kid on the way. We got to keep it real. Yes, you should be. Right. So I'm thinking... This kid got to go to school. Like, it's, it's pumping in my head every day. I'm mm. like going, like, I, I obsess over things like that, right? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm coming up with concepts and ideas for this business that I want to build okay. in the headwear industry. Like, this is what initially how the name came along. And I'm thinking, all right, cool. I'm, I'm dyslexic, you know. I am. So right. I'm letting you know that I am okay. right now. Um, so I'm like, I got to find something that's easy to spell. Mm. And that's catchy and that is going to resonate with customers. And also that's gonna resonate with Google. Ooh. Yeah. It's it's funny you say that. It's funny you say that. Not to cut you off, but when it comes to naming, right? I always tell most of my students. Yeah. They're like, oh my God, my name, my name. People spend a lot of time on their names. Yeah. And then when they get to it, there's it it, it can't relate. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, their name is important on for searchability if i'm going on google and i'm going to go look for cap swag i'm not i'm not going to type in cap underscore square nah. swag and nah. none of that nah so that's what people are doing these days nah. they're, they're not they're just choosing a name and then they can't find it on social they can't find it nowhere else but they still decide to use that name yeah and for you with cap swag you cap swag everywhere yeah and that was important yeah so I, I, I put a lot of thought into the name on, a, on an initial level, not because I'm obsessed over a name and a brand. You know how some people, you meet them, they want to start a business. So they're out there like trying to pick the best logo yeah. and the best name for like years. Right. That's not where I was for at. Years. I'm over here obsessed about this thing for a week, mm. straight up trying to get it done. Like I'm, I'm like, I need to get this name. I need to get my logo. I need to get my brand identity up and running immediately wow and then i need to focus on building the business because i don't care how good your logo looks and your name looks if you ain't got no business what you have is a cute idea Mm. you have nothing else Mm. so so i was trying to tell you 
you know, how it came about as a joke. Right. So I'm like thinking about the name. I'm like, I need something for my dyslexic self so I can type it easily in the computer, you know, regularly. And then also I needed to be catchy for Google. I needed to be catchy for the people. I needed to be something that I can really get behind. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm like, cap, cap. I needed to have something to do with headwear, cap, cap, cap. Mm. And then cap swag pop, popped into my head. My wife nice. was like, man, that's horrible. Nice. <laughs> she was like, yo, that's horrible. No, don't do that. Right. I'm like, listen, this is going to be, it. that's the name, mm. right? And the more research I did on the name, the more I realized it was the name. Wow. So people associate the name swag with what? What is swag to you when I say it's, swag? It's a fashion. It's, yeah, like. I, I want you to look up the word swag okay. on your phone right now. Man, it, it came to me like God was whispering in my ears. And y'all listening to this right now, you're like, this dude's kind of building this up right We're now. We're going to look up swag. But, but just look it up right now, and then it'll all make sense. Yeah. Swag meaning. Yeah, look it up. Swag. Yeah. Refer to a valuable goods. Often obtained illegally. Uh huh. <laughs> just we, we, we're not going in that direction. Right, we're definitely not. not. Just because your friend has a bag of swag does not make him, her a pirate. Keep going. Although the patch of a wooden leg might say otherwise, generally means loot, booty, or <laughs> yeah. Yeah. swag is stuff in a bag of ex- excited party. Go, goers. Go ahead. Keep going. You're in the right direction. And ponders a lot. So the word swag once had many meanings, such as stuff we all get. If you keep looking down on that, right, you're going to find a section about swag also meaning promotional products mm. that are given away to people. You understand? Tell me more about that. Yeah. So when I read that, I thought to myself, this is it. This represents the current. And, and the current was nothing, but it represents my visual, you know, idea of what this business is going to look like immediately. Okay. But it, but it also it represents lifestyle and it also represents the future of where I knew this business was going to go. And the promotional side of it, I always knew that one way or another, that's where we needed to be. Right. You, you understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So that name, it, I baked into the cake so many conceptual things that I felt were important. Mm. Seven letters, easy to read, dot wow. com, not dot C A, not dot B B B I B Z. We ain't about to go into that. No, nah, you can't do that. You can't do that. That's that's a negative. Dot net dot no. dot co, but it's a business. Like it's a business. It's a business. Yeah, it so you, should be dot easily com. dot com yeah. searchable because that's how the mind is gonna think. It, there's immediately. no there's no legit Man, you were talking like I had the website set up like five, like what was it, seven years ago. Wow. You know, like online shopping and credibility was not always there. Mm. Like if you think back to back in the day when you was buying online, did you think that you were going to receive all the goods that you ordered? There was a percentage that you weren't. <laughs> you weren't. There was a lot of fraudulent activity, bro. Like yeah. that's what it was. That's real right. Every website was suspect unless it was. The top websites, mm-hmm. but all that, all the small joints, like they were suspect. You placed an order. You were like waiting whether you were going to get your items or not. So to add anything but dot com, you were already behind the gun. Right. You, you have to add dot com. What else are you going to, unless you're an organization or a school right. or something like that, and it's informational. You can hit that dot org, but. No dot com, no dot close. Ooh, no dot money. None of that. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So. How, like, how did this all start, man? Like, yeah. take me back. Take us back. Us, the listeners, anybody that's in this room, anybody that's watching, listening, whatever. Take me back to the very first idea. Like, how this all started. Well, I told you, like we were talking about earlier, we were talking about our backgrounds. And I was really trying to get to know you as a person. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, we knew each other casually. We met a couple once before, talked on the phone, but we never really... Knew right. each other, knew each other. So I told you before, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn. Okay. I'm from Sunset Park, right? So 55th and 6th and 7th is exactly where I'm from. Nice. I grew up there. I lived out there for about 18 years. Then my family moved out to Jersey when I was about 19. So growing up in that environment, it really, it really, it made an impression on me, mm. right? Like 
you, you had to be fresh, bro. Like, like, you couldn't go to school without the right sneakers on. Man. I mean, that was just, you, I mean, you couldn't hold your head up, bro. Right. Like, it was that kind of situation. So, in, a, in an urban environment, anybody that grows up in an urban environment, they understand the, the, the equity that mm. that comes along with. That's why companies like Nike owe a lot. Yeah. They owe a lot to the hood. They owe a lot to urban environments because they built that business. Fact. You, you understand? Fact. So that mindset, right or wrong, because we don't know if it's right or wrong. Right. Right. That really left an impact on me as a person. You know what I'm saying? Imagine dating a girl. You, you know, you, you, it's a negative. It's right. not happening mm-hmm. unless you look right. Right. So, facts. so you're, you're, you're talking about growing up in that environment and understanding the dynamic of what that was to a kid growing up in that environment. So I carried that with me for the rest of my life. Okay. So, you know, growing up in that area, I would see a lot of different stores like sneaker stores, apparel stores, you know, hat stores, different kind of businesses. And I always looked at those stores. First of it, first of all, you know, if you grew up in an urban environment, chances are, you know, your, your family's not too well off, right? If they were, you'd probably be living in a different area. That's true. Right. That's true. So, a lot of times when I went to those stores, I went, you know, like I was going to a museum, look, but don't touch. Mm. Right. So I saw the impact that those retail locations had on the community. And then I also saw the collective of different businesses that were in there and how they, they did. One of the stores, you know, to, to their credit that I really, I really looked at really closely back then, you know, was a, a cap store on fifth avenue and between like 55th and 54th shout out to them uh it was a pakistani guy paki guy he owned this business for a long time like bro he owned this business since i was like in elementary school wow and it's still there still right? last that i checked it's still there so i looked at his store and i was like like damn like this guy really has some longevity in this like imagine owning a business for 30 years bro and wow. like you're still doing well and then he had like two locations i thought it was secure you know so I looked at that business and then when we moved down to Jersey and we opened the business down in Jersey, you know, I, we can get into that in a different conversation. Right. I looked at what was available here to the customer first and what was missing. Mm. That kind of business, that headwear business where it was a lifestyle inspired, nobody was doing it. Not like that. And I saw that these guys were, you know, they were doing their thing you know, to a certain extent, but they missed out on a lot of that. They didn't cater to the lifestyle market. Okay. They catered to the casual sports fan. You understand? Right. But I feel like they catered to the lifestyle market. They didn't treat the lifestyle market with the care that it needed to be treated. So when I came into this area, I really, and I came into this area selling different, with a different business, I really looked at that with with a microscope and said, okay, cool. If we get into this business, if we get into the headwear as an initial business, okay. can we do a better job at the peop- than the people that are doing it? If you can, then you do it. And if you can't, why are you wasting your time? Right. Right? So that, that's kind of how we initially started. I was involved in a different business, and I saw an opportunity to bring value mm. to the area by doing that. So okay. that, was, that was out of necessity. Nice. That's how we started. And yeah, and... The important part that I like about it is that you 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 found something that was missing yeah. in, in 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 an industry or something like that. You say it was lifestyle, so people was doing it. They were doing hats or whatever, but they were they were missing the lifestyle part of it. And so you jumped in there and you niched it down to just hats. You ain't go ahead and say off the rip. I'm gonna sell hats, socks, clothes, all that. You know, so I think it's important for our people to to know that, like, if you're going to get into a business, we say all the time, they said niches bring riches. Yes, you can you can bring other things into your business later on. But at the beginning, you got to have it focused. Bro, you're competing against people that have been doing something for 20 years. Right. How are you going to compete against that level of craft unless you're taking what they're doing seriously? Mm. Like they're not just gonna hand it to you, bro. Like nobody's you know gonna I mean? hand you nothing. Nah, you got you got to really take what they're doing seriously and say like, look, this guy's been successful to a certain extent. Right. I see where he's missing. He's been ex- successful to a certain extent for 
20 years, he's got to be doing some things right. Can't be doing everything wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it's easy to think that, but it's that's wrong. So in order to do that, you, in order to bring that level of craft to the situation, you got to you got to respect the craft. Yeah. Right. There's no need to recreate. No, you have to learn. You just got to. Yeah. Humility is a powerful thing. When you enter a situation and say, I don't know, I need to learn as much as I can. And in the process, I need to slim it down and simplify it for myself and my customer. You learn. Right. And then you can better it. Mm. How are you going to how are you going to better something? You don't know what it is. Right. How? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you can have all the ideas in the world about making it this thing, you know, in the future. But you have to learn what the business is initially. Mm. Like I was not a huge sports fan, bro. I had to learn all the leagues, all the sports. It was like it was a whole different lifestyle. Like I was a Knicks fan growing up. Okay. So growing up as a Knicks fan, you don't even want to watch a game because it's depressing. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So it's like I wasn't really that big of a fan when I started the business. Okay. I'll keep it real with you. Um, I became more of a fan out of the respect for some of the teams that were involved and how much they meant to me in my lifestyle. Right. But I had to learn all that sports okay i had to learn about headwear in general like the sizes the styles i had to learn about like the like okay so when you approach a business your bias your internal bias is something that stops you from really looking at the full scope of it so for example me growing up in the hood in a lifestyle market what was my focus my focus was lifestyle trend so for example lifestyle trend would be like snapback hats you know, at the time when we first took off, took off, that was like a big deal. Right. But I didn't pay that much attention to the fan customer product. So I had to learn a lot more about that. You know, come to find out fan customer is the biggest business mm. because they're consistent. Trend comes up and down, but that's your consistent thing. Right. You understand? Yeah. So in order for you to like be successful at something, you got to take advantage of trend and lifestyle. But you also have to understand the core market of a business is fan. So in the headwear business specifically, there's different categories of products that people wear. What you wear is not what the guy that's coaching the little league team is going to wear. Okay. So I'm not trying to cater to just lifestyle. I'm trying to cater to the market. Mm. So I had to learn about that. The different customer, what product they were looking for. I actually did my research on it and I come to find out that the biggest selling silhouette is not a fitted or a snapback hat. It was actually a 39, 39... 39, 30 flex fit hat. I, okay. I came to find out that that was the biggest selling hat. I'm like, who the hell is buying this? Wow. And come to find out that that's, it sells the most because the fan customer is the core of the business. Exactly. You understand? Yeah. Market research, man. Yeah. Market research. 100, it's important. Definitely important. Yeah. Like, hey, you can't just go into a business and not do the, the, the market research. Who's the audience? Who? Like, what does that audience look like? Who is it that one person? I always tell people, you got to find that one person in the market that you're going to serve to. Who is this person? What's their age? What do they do? What, like, what is that market research that you're doing? And most people skip that step. You know, they just want to jump right in and don't put in the work of learning, man. You, like, you're, not committed to the, you're not committed to the craft. Yeah. You're not. If, you, if you're not going to be committed to the craft, you're not going to succeed, bro. It's true. You know, if you're not willing to do the, the research beforehand, you, you lost before you started. Yeah. Honestly. You know what uh, I'm saying? So, like, for me, that was, like, that was just what needed to be done. Pre prerequisites okay. to doing this. You can't ask. Man, when you start a business, like, you know. When you start a business, your family has to be willing to support your decision. Important. Yeah. So, the, all of the... All of the sacrifices that you make, the late nights, right? The the times where people are doing their thing and you got to work, the the weekends, the family gatherings, mm -hmm. those are sacrifices, bro, that you need to make. Your significant other and your family has to understand and support those. Yeah. If they can't get behind you because they don't, they don't think you 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 doing it right or you treating it with the level of respect that it needs, how are you going to be successful? They're going to be in your ear every day talking about. Yeah, man, you're wasting do your this. time. You're wasting your time. Wasting Go do your something time. else. We need you over here. Yeah, so here's here's another thing we need to think about as future entrepreneurs. If your family fr and friends are thinking that, I want you to ask yourself an honest question. Are you giving them every reason to not think that? 
Wow. Are you showing them that you're serious about yourself, that you're dedicated to your craft, that you're doing the research, that you understand it, that you've taken the time to understand the minute details of branding, of lettering, quantity of letters, how, how it's going to be received by search engines and people. Are you really doing that? Wow. If you're not doing that, how are you going to ask them to commit mm. to your lifestyle? When somebody marries an entrepreneur, they become a pseudo entrepreneur. Okay. Right? That's true. Because they got to deal with your it's bullshit. Automatic. Yeah. It's automatic. You got to deal with me. Bro, my, my long nights. My wife last night was with me doing, we was doing like accounting till five in the morning. Last night. Yeah. Me and her, five, both of us for like 15 hours a piece. How are you going to ask somebody to commit to that if they don't view you as a serious person yeah. when it comes to your craft? The research is the minimum that you should be doing. It's a pre prerequisite to entering the market. You cannot do that. You cannot enter the market. It's like the toll that you pay. You just can't come in. Wow. Straight up. So how many years have you been in business, man? Bro, I feel like I'm going to keep it real with you, bro. I feel like I've been doing this since I was born. Wow. Yo, you know, you know, you know that guy, No Jumper? Yeah. <laughs> you know that from Martin, right? Um, no jumper. No, no, the, the podcast guy. Okay, okay, yeah. He got a. I, I seen a couple of his episodes. No jumper. <clears throat> he got a. Excuse me. He got a a show called No Jumper. No jumper. I'm the no jumper. Okay. I don't got a jumper. I can't play no instruments. Mm. You understand? So I don't. I, I'm not musically inclined. I'm not artistically inclined. I can't draw. And I'm dyslexic. Okay. You understand? Right. So I'm crossing off a lot of things that I You're can't right. do right, right now. You know what I mean? So I had to be great at something. Mm. I had to be good at something first in order for me to be great at something. So growing up, my father was always involved. He, he worked for somebody for a while and then he would have like a, a flea market hustle. Okay. You know Africans, bro. Yeah. We're African, <laughs> not African. <laughs> You're right. You understand? So... What he did was, he, you know, he worked for somebody. He had this little side hustle, and he would wake me up at like four or five o'clock in the morning, get a truck. I'm talking about, I was like 10. And he'd be like, yo, get in the truck. Let's We're go. going to the flea market. Let's go. And the best part of the day for me was we got a, a coffee and a croissant. You know what I'm saying? We was fancy from like the, thir <laughs> the third avenue poppy store. You're right. The fourth <laughs> avenue poppy store. We would get a, a coffee and a croissant. That was like the highlight of the day, bro, at four or five, five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. Load the truck, get the coffee. Head to the flea market, work outside all day in the sun, come back, do it again all weekend long. <clears throat> and I saw the hustle from like a big, like the beginning stages of what it took to make something work. Mm. My father saved enough money to where he could then open a business in our, in our neighborhood. So I lived on 55th. He opened a business on 72nd and, uh, and fifth Avenue. So about a mile away. Okay. Right. Like, a uh, and, and close to our neighborhood. And uh, when he opened the business, I opened the business. So he, you know, he would make me come to the store regularly, bro. So it was like me getting a graduate's degree nice. at like 12, 13 years old on business. Like he would do crazy shit, bro. Like the guy was a marketing genius. Nice. Straight up. I, I swear to God. He would do crazy shit. Like, like one day we was in the store and he was like, he gave me a dollar this was after the store was built. He gave me a dollar. He get a couple dollars. And he was like, go buy some old newspapers. I'm like, why? Why do you need old? He's like, don't ask me questions. Just go get go get the newspapers. I took the money, went to go get the newspapers. He's like, go get go get a pair of scissors. So I, he's like, start cutting up the newspaper. Start cutting up the newspapers. He's like, throw them all over the floor. I'm like, why? He's like, I told you don't just do what just I asked you. Just do it. Yeah. I, again, my father's Middle Eastern family. Yeah. Right. You're not supposed to ask any questions. Just do what I asked you to do. It's true. Cut cut the newspapers up, throw them all over the floor. I'm like, damn, bro, I gotta clean this joint when he's done with this. I don't want to do this. So he's like, come on, come on, hurry up, clean. You know, cut them up, throw them all over. He's like, all right, cool. Go, now go sit behind the counter. I went and sit behind the counter. I start seeing customers walk by, like, Yo, what the hell's going on in there, bro? Something's going on in there. There was yeah. nobody, just me and him. <laughs> so like, me and him are sitting in the store. There's no customers in there. So he's like coming up with these creative. Like schemes to get people to look in there on, on how to get a customer in the door. And people start looking in. They say, what the hell is going on? They walk in and they see all this newspapers on the floor. They think commotion going on. And it's like, oh, shit, you sell batteries? Mm -hmm. 
oh shit, you sell cassettes? I didn't know. Wait, you have char- like chargers in here? You have, you have stereo equipment in here? I didn't even know that. Just get them in here, bro. My father was like, my wow. ho- homie was lethal at like marketing, like grassroots marketing. Another time, he you know he had these windows in the front of the store, and uh, he would like this guy was like. And you watching him put together a window, like a fr- like a front store window, was like watching an artist work, like straight up. He would come get all this construction paper, like wild colors, make his signs, you know, like it was a craft, craft. Okay. I watched it, and uh, he would do shit like he would put like a clock upside down in the window. And uh, a customer w- w- walked in one day and she said, "Yo, your clock is upside down." Right. He's like, "All right, thank you." <laughs> she left. I'm like, yeah, you, you want me to go turn the clock up, the right side up? He's like, no, nah, leave it in. Next customer come, you have your clock is upside down. And, the, and it, oh, shit, you got batteries in here? You got tapes in here? Right. You got chargers in here? And this is how his mind worked. Do he, stuff to get them yeah, in. Yeah, bro. He's like, th- I learned so much about just how to, how to engage people without sp- mm. before speaking to them. And the power of just creative marketing. From this guy that's like, he came to this country not knowing how to speak any English, opened a business, and had to find a way to feed his four kids. Right. So, you know, I'm lucky, bro. I'm not going to lie, man. I grew up in an environment where, you know, I had my father really educate me on those things. Uh, I think early in life, you don't really understand or appreciate the value of that. You think you're being punished because you're putting time into. Man. Bro, you we, we learned that, man. Yeah, learn next. Even myself, man. Like I had to learn some of that. Like, damn, all these years, my dad was tough on me. Yeah, that's like those are the value that we were living by now. Yeah, living by. It was, it was, it was setting the stage. It was setting, like, planting the seeds, bro. Right, because they've been through it. Yeah, they've been through it. Yeah, I mean, and what what type of leader would they be if they don't guide you through the path that? Not only did they go through, but they they know that okay, I went through this way, this is what worked, and this is what d- didn't work. So don't go that way. But yeah. still, yet yeah, we 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 always want to touch the fire. I you think I, mean? I think that that's the job of a parent. Yeah, to set the you know he's supposed to set the seeds, and let let the situation flourish. Um, one of the most important things. I'm going to say that my father taught me above anything else was character. Mm. Character, like the type of character that you have when things are going wrong and how you treat your family and friends and your partners when things did not work out because that business ended up not working out for him. Right. He ended up losing a lot of money, but he, he maintained his character. He did not do wrong when it was easy to do wrong. Mm. That That was... And I, I, at the time, I was young, dumb. I didn't understand, like, bro, like, you got to do whatever. You yeah. know, like, I was that. You know, you got to do whatever, you know? And uh, in his mind, he was like, nah, you don't do whatever. You do what needs to be done, and you maintain your character. You know, that was, at first, growing up, I thought the most important lesson was his sales ability. The older I get, the more I understand that his character, you know, what he did when people were not looking, that was, I can honestly say, bro, like, the man has character. Not because of my father, because I have right. family members that got zero character. Yeah. Keep it <laughs> I'll keep it real with you. Yeah. And if they did, I would say they have zero character, you know? Yeah. But he, the, his, the quality of, just the, qual- the integrity that he kept during, during times where things were difficult, that taught me a lot, you know? And then uh, you're just a sales, you know? This guy is, uh, he's a beast, bro. Okay. It's in terms of sales. So what would you say is the most important character to have as a entrepreneur, a business owner? Yeah, what like what do you what do you consider one of the most important characters as as a business owner? You got to be thick-skinned, bro. Mm. You got to be resilient. Okay? If everything that that happens to you breaks you down inside, you're done before you started. Yeah. You got to be tough, internal fortitude, bro. Think about it. Think about all the stuff that you do that fails. Mm-hmm. If you sit there and linger about everything that happened to you that did not go your way, how much time and energy are you spend spending doing what works? You're not, right? So you're 
like the conversation me and you had earlier, right? Right. Retail was not working out the way you expected, you anticipated, whatever the case may be. Yep. This happened to me. It's happened to a lot of business owners. Their first, their first retail experience is not usually a good one, by mm -hmm. the way. That happened to the Subways guy. You know, Subways, yep. he opened a second one just to prop the first one up. Yeah. So I think being resilient is, you got to be resilient, bro. Got to be tough, man. Yeah. And then I must say sales. If you can't sell pe people on why they need to believe in you, then you ain't going to make it straight up. I'm, I'm just keeping it real. You got to be able to sell. Now, when I say sell, am I talking about like ShamWow? Sell? Like buy now. Right. You know, that's not what I'm talking Force about. Force it on there. No, you got to believe in your, your trajectory and sell your trajectory to the people that you bang with. If you cannot do that, and what I'm saying is like that you got to sell your wife. Okay. You got to sell her father. Yeah. <laughs> your father-in-law. You got to sell her mother. Right. Because they're looking at like the decisions that you're making on whether or not they're going to you're, you're going to be having a, a, a stable lifestyle for their for grandchildren. Their child, yeah. And their, their child and their grandchildren. You got to sell your you got to sell. You got to make the case. They don't have to buy, but you have to make the case so solid and you have to be so self assured that it that you're able to project that to mm -hmm. banks to partners to people that that view your business in a way that they think there's value there you have to be able to sell mm -hmm. right yeah selling no like trust yeah selling is not i'm not talking about selling people something that they don't want i'm talking about selling your brand image whatever that is to the world if you can't do that I struggle to find out how you're going to be able to be successful. Yeah. I just don't know how you're going to do it. Like, I, I just, you know, I, I'm going to say that that's probably one of the most important, you know, attributes. My father was a, a very strong salesman. I say was. He still works with me. He right. works in, in Berlin with us in the business. But his sales skill was like, mm. he, and it was honest. You know what I'm saying? It's important. Yeah, you know how some salespeople can be like yeah. sleazy, bro. Like they're yeah. just telling you what the hell you want to hear. Tell them what they want to hear to nah, get that bro. commission and all that. I seen them straight up insult people, straight up like say things that were like not, but they knew it was right and it mm. was true. Not insult them like belittle and make them feel bad, but like tell them like this is what it is. Right. You should know that you need to know that this is what it like for example, your roadcaster pro like your 100% committed to this piece of t technology. Yeah. If somebody comes to you and they're like, yo, this is better and you're selling that, you need to, you need to educate them. Yeah. And he would educate, bro. That's important, boy. You yeah. got, you got it. Especially in today's world, we have to educate our customers. Yes. We have to. That's why content is important. Yes. You know, because how can I, like you selling this cup. Yes. But, I don't really know what this cup yes. really does. Is yes. it like the same as the other cup that I can just pour water in? Yes. Like what makes your cup or the lid on your cup different from some else? You have to educate me. You have me. to educate me. You mean? And that's like providing that content, having that conversation with me, educating me on what that product is. So I said insult. People would take insult to it because of his conviction, mm. but they would respect the fact that he had conviction in what it is that he was doing. Okay. So if he thought that that was that Roadcast Pro was it, he was going to tell you and educate you whether you liked it or not. And because of that, he, they would walk away and they're kind of annoying to come back and be like, oh, here's a 600. Let me get this. Cookie. Let me get that thing <laughs> real, quick. real quick. <laughs> They'll be upset too. I'll be looking at the ring him up on the register, just looking at him. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's how you do it. You know? Yeah. So he was, you know, he's like that, bro. So I, I got a first class education in, in that side of things. Granted, I'm like, the worst student ever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like academically, I'm just not a good student. Um, but I got like real world experience, like apprenticeship. Mm. And I, I ha my, my experience had to come, happened to come from, from my father. So I was, I was fortunate to have that. Not a lot of people have that. So, right. Yeah. It's, it's important, man. It's important. You got to have a role model in business or yes. a mentor in yes. business. You know, a lot of people now, we, we're so quick to say that, oh, it's not working. It ain't work. Or like, it just, oh, I give up. But I think what needs to happen, you need to find someone that has been through it, that knows that it worked, 
and you find out why it's not working for you because it works. Other people have they have done it. You know what I mean, that comes with a level of humility. Yeah, too. Right? Yeah, definitely. How think about you as a as a businessman. Right? You got your own business. Right? Garment Creations, right? How hard is it for some people to just say, "Look, man, I don't know." Mm. Like this is what it is. Like I, I'd like to pick your brain. Humility is a powerful thing, bro. Man. Right? Man. When somebody comes to you like that, it's hard for you to say no. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When you come with when your first step is humility. Most deals that I've seen that people did not get what they wanted to get was because they didn't approach the situation with a level of humility. Mm. You understand? Right. Now, don't confuse humility with not like not actually not understanding your your value. That's not what I mean. Okay. Right? Because humility can be used against you yeah. if, if you're not using it correctly, if you're not viewing it correctly. Exactly. I'm talking about strictly humility in a scenario. So, for example, right? <clears throat> when you approach, when, when, when I wanted to look into this podcasting thing, because I built this room specifically to do this. Yeah. Right? So, I'm not on the Joe Rogan wave. Right. Like, I've been knowing that this was a thing. Right? I have a soundproof built out room that's mm -hmm. two years old. It's nice too. Yeah, um, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, so when I wanted to do this, I, I, I'm not an audio engineer. That's not my, that's not my gift. Bro. Right. Like, I don't, I can't pretend to be that. That's not who I am. So I reached out to you. You, you know, credit to you. You understand the value and what it is that we're building. Yeah. And you look at the past and the future. You're not a dumb dude. So you see all that and you're like, yeah, listen, yeah, we, this, this could work. Yeah. You understand? Definitely. A lot of people shortchange their own hustle. Mm. Right. I'll give you another example. I have, I've had relationships with people where I'm like, listen, we're, we we want to build this. Let's be involved. Right. And they're like, all right, cool. So what is the work that's involved? And I'll list the work that we need to get done. And I'm like, listen, this is what I can afford to pay you. Mm -hmm. for this right now because this is a a budding enterprise for us okay it's in the beginning stages of being something right in terms of that project okay right and i'll say look this is what i can afford to pay in my mind i'm thinking i'm gonna pay him this much if they're committed we're gonna take it to this level mm -hmm. you get me yeah we have to take it to this level because nobody's gonna stay, sit there and work for this it's not gonna make no sense right but eventually if they're smart enough to commit i'm a, we're gonna build quick Right, like six months down the line, we'll be at this level. I'm already thinking like six months along. Mm -hmm. They're so stuck on that yeah. initial offer that they can't even see past that. Their vision is so skewed yeah. because their their priorities are fucked up. Not long term. They're already thinking like, well, they have different priorities. They're thinking I got to do this with my time. I got to do this with my time, but they're not thinking this could be bigger than anything that I'm doing. I have to pay attention. I have to respect it because. Let me do my research, figure out if this is something to respect or not. Right. 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 So they they screw up those like situations. They screw up those relationships because they don't understand. The beginning is always the beginning. It's always the lowest beginning of the story. It's not mm -hmm. where it ends. <laughs> and, and you know, and I know as business owners, we're always going to find an answer to what we need to do. Ain't, gonna, ain't nobody stopping <laughs> that. No. Nope. Yeah. So like if they, if. Like I saw a post on 50, I follow 50 on, on Instagram. Okay. Dude, that dude is crazy. I follow 50 on Instagram. I'm like, I saw a post. He, he said, okay, you can help me do it or you can watch me do it. Pick mm. one. Right? Or, that's, that says a lot. That's a strong, that's a strong statement. That says a lot. Yeah. So not to be arrogant or, you know, that's not the point. Mm. This is arrogance and confidence are different. Right? I'm going to do it. Right. Now you can, you can start and we can start together. And we, we don't know where it's going to lead. Right. Like I, I explained to you the Phil situation where he started as an employee and he's now a partner. Mm -hmm. Why does not, I don't, my, my question is this, people don't think about things like that. Like, yo shit, you don't know where something started and where it's going to end. You don't. You don't. So as long as you're, you trust your heart and say like, look, this is somebody I want to work with because I feel like they're committed and they have the resources to do it. Well, I don't know. Sometimes people, I feel like people overvalue their time. You know how like we're taught to value our time? Right. Not everybody's time is that valuable, bro. <laughs> Real it's talk. It's not. Right? That's, I, I, that's I, the truth. I, it, it just really is. It's Some people's truth. time, most of it is wasted. Honestly, they're playing video games or doing whatever the hell they do. They're not really committed to anything. Right. 
So somebody offers you something and you, you feel like, yo, th- these people are on something. We can build something together. But they, you know, they won't jump on that opportunity. So what ends up happening is that window closes and we, f- we find an intern to do their job. Yeah. And, f- you know, the intern is like, this, this situation happened already. Wow. The intern is like, yeah, when can I start? I'm like, yo, this is what we're going to do. And they're like, wow. When can I start? Mm-hmm. Perspective is a, that's it. Perspective is a motherfucker, bro. Like, when yeah, can I start? Yeah, and it just those like those themes occur regularly, bro. Wow. Don't short don't shortchange your hustle. Don't shortchange your hustle, guys. You hear that? Bro, don't shortchange your hustle, it's man. It's incredibly important. For a couple hundred bucks, why would you alienate a relationship? Mm. What the hell? Right. Like we was talking earlier. Look. If who you're dealing with, right, maybe a couple thousand. Right. Okay, here's another way to view it, right? If who you're dealing with is worth more than that amount of money, fuck the money. The relationship. Fuck the money. Forget it. Put it shelf that shit. Think about what the relationship is and whether or not it's more valuable mm-hmm. than that dollar amount. Right. Right? Facts. So that person's only thinking about the dollar amount. You can already see. They're not even seeing like... They're not digging behind, like, yo, tell me this, tell me the vision. Like, what is it? They're only thinking, I'm gonna get this much money to do this much work. Yeah. And that's it. But they're not that that's already the wrong person for the job. Because they're not committed. That intern is more committed than they are. Mm. Right? Yeah. They're willing to do it for free. Yeah, they just they just want to put their foot in. For freedom. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> like for free. So imagine, I I don't know. I I think like you know, a lot of people have perspectives, different. I don't know how people feel about internship programs and stuff like that. I think they're amazing, bro. Mm. Real talk. You're talking about mentorship. You're talking about building with somebody. You're talking about building your own job before it's there. I love it. Real talk. I love it. I love what it means if it's used correctly right. and fairly. Right. If you're offering real opportunity, real knowledge, if you're really kicking game to somebody, an internship it's amazing. Mm-hmm. You should definitely. Matter of fact, my daughters, when they get to a certain stage in their life, I'm going to tell them, get an internship before a job. Think about the level of contacts that you make. Right. OK. I, I, I like to read like uh, certain, not just business books, but like all kinds of books. And I, real talk, I don't I don't even read them anymore. I listen to the audio books, mm-hmm. you know. One of the one of the books that I did read was that Steve Jobs book. Did you read that? No. He, it's a great read. When you get a chance, check it out. It's not it's not like a, a bland or boring read. He's like, when he came back to Apple the second time, he told him, "I don't want no money." Imagine the flex on that. You understand me? Right. He was like, they were like, okay, cool. What do you you know what are you talking about? Sally's like, I don't want no money. I'm gonna do. I'm. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna build this company back up from where y'all threw me out. I don't need no money. I always felt like that was the biggest flex. Okay. You understand me? Yeah. Because now all of a sudden everybody in the room is getting paid and you're not, and you're doing the job. Mm. You understand me? So you look at the you interns have a sense of power that they don't even they don't materialize when you're committed. In an internship level, whether it's paid or unpaid, whatever, you're you're already like your expectations from the employer are already better. Okay. Because you're committing. You're committed. At your time to do something to help build this business. You're the first one for the job. This kid that I'm hiring to do that internship for the for some of the stuff that we're doing, bro, the job becomes available. He he puts six months into this, it's his. Straight right. up. It's his. I'm taking care of him. Why? Commitment. Yeah, because he put six months of time into, you know, maybe he put like 10, 20 hours a week, whatever. But he did it. And you got people that are willing to be paid for it and they, they don't do they it. They don't do it. That's crazy, they right? They don't do it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is crazy because it's just like most people, people say all the time, like, you should do, do, do it free. It's like that free, free for win type thing. It's just like, to really show someone that you're committed, you if you're willing to do it for free, they're watching. I mean, they're watching, they're taking notes, 
and eventually they're gonna give you something for that. If it's that job or whatever that whatever it is, if you're doing it for free, someone's gonna pay you to do it. I'm gonna I'm, l- let me just clarify that because I know I'm gonna catch on the heat at some point for this okay. statement, right? So be be decisive and smart about where you're giving your time to. Mm. Okay, because your, your time is valuable. Because right. people are gonna oh. My time is valuable. My time is valuable. You, you know. Of course. Meanwhile, you know, it's Netflix and chill. Right. <laughs> Come on now. Right? So let me just, let me clarify that statement by saying this. Be decisive and thoughtful about where you give that time to because your time is valuable. But understand that there are things that are worth more than money. Mm. They are. If you're in business to succeed and to do better, you must understand that principle. If you do not understand that principle, you 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 already lost, bro. Like, like, wow. There's so many things that I don't even think about money when I do it. Matter of fact, it's on the last list of my mind. Yeah, yeah. I lose on a lot of different scenarios because money is not the number one motivator. Mm-hmm. Building something is so Building. money. Yeah. So, you know, I take a I take a scenario where it's not it's a loss leader. I already know. But, you know, we do it anyways. Yeah. It's a part of business, man. Yeah. It's a part of business. And most people are just, they're scared, you know? <coughs> they're Excuse scared. Me. So let's let's talk a little bit about fear with sure. business, man. Let's talk a little bit about fear. That's what important. Is, yeah, like fear and failure. Okay? Like as a business owner, and I know you've been doing it for years, and what was what was your biggest failure and... What, like, how did you learn from that? Or what did that lead to as a business owner than where you're at now? So f- failure is actually one of the most important assets you can have, right? Right. If you fear nothing, you're a dangerous person. Mm. You understand? Because you, you can make a mistake, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, it has its good, it has its bad, but let's keep it real. Most people have fear, Yeah. right? So fear is actually a great motivator. Fear is a motivator. It's a fucking motivator. Yeah. Think about it. Think about how many things in life you fear losing if you make a mistake. It's a motive. It's it will motivate you to get your ass up and get things done. Mm-hmm. Right. That's for sure. So I don't look at fear as a bad thing. I just know how to manage it. Ooh. I, that it's I, I I view what I do with a certain level of fear, but I understand that is that's part of my. That's part of the DNA of building. Mm -hmm. I don't let fear take advantage of me or make me emotional and illogical. I look at it like I'm supposed to feel that way. Yeah. Right? Right. So let's say, for example, you know, we're we're in our 30s now, so we're not young bucks anymore. Like we're like we're like middle age bucks. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So let's say, for example, you know, we start a business, we're in our mid 30s, and it's time for us. You know, we have Mm -hmm. to succeed. It's not like you're not 20s where you got internships. Yeah, you ain't and, testing the waters at nah, this nah, point. No, no, no. You got to. You, there's no practice. No. You, you you're out there to, to hit the ball out the court, the ball out the the stadium. You're out there to score every time, right? So when you view your 30s like that, you know there's a certain level of pressure and fear that's be, built into it. Mm-hmm. So everything that you do, you in the back of your mind, you think I got no time to waste here, right? That's a motivator. That's not a bad thing, right? That's something that you should be using regularly. If you don't fear your family being destitute, shit, man. What the fuck do you feel? <laughs> what do you fear? Honestly. For real. You should fear that. For real. So that should motivate you to motivate your staff. Look, I told you before, like you're you're in an amazing situation where you're 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 right now, you're so nimble. You're mm-hmm. like a jet ski. You get in the ocean and you just boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you do what the fuck you want. Right. They know. Nobody can tell you shit, right? The bigger your organization gets, because it will get bigger. Mm-hmm. I know it will get bigger. The bigger your organization gets, the more you're gonna you're gonna see you're, you become like a a boat. It's a little bit harder to make that turn mm. because so many people on the boat. Man, you can't just p- pump that left, pump that right when the when the wave hits, and maybe you know you get to a point point where you're like a ferry. Got a couple people on this boat, yeah. man. I can't just pull that. Be left. a little more strategic with your turns. Hell yeah, because <laughs> you turn, you flip the goddamn boat. Yeah. So, or you get to a point where you're like, uh, you know, 
like one of those big big fishing boats. I'm not a boat guy, like big ass fishing boats. Right. Right? You're not turning unless you're giving signals. It's 30 minutes a turn. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's why a lot of corporations, they don't move like us. Mm. They don't get on trend because they're a big boat. Think about how long it takes them to turn and pivot in those scenarios. Right. Right? Yeah. So I feel like your your fear right now is only you. When you have fear, you pivot. Mm -hmm. It motivates you. How do you instill that same level of motivation and pivot in a staff or a boat of 15? How? Oh. Right? Hey. It's not their money on the line, bro. Uh -uh. Yeah. So, like, no matter what you do with them, their fear is limited to their job, bro. Like, that's hard. You understand? Yeah. For me, that's difficult, you know, to do. So, like... If you fail, your company fails, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be able to create an organization where people are so invested that they don't want you to fail because they feel like wow. they're losing. Wow. That's hard. Yeah. That's fucking hard, man. That's really, really hard to do. Anybody that tells you that's easy is just not being honest with you, you know? So I, I don't know. Fear to me is this is positive. It's, po it's positive. I just know how to, I know how to mitigate, manage. I know how to deal with it. Um, I need to learn how to better compartmentalize that pro that product, that energy into staff as well without making them feel fearful of their job. They need to have a certain level of fear, but it, not the negative type. Not like, right. I'm going to fire you if you don't, you know, that's not going to work, bro. It's not comfortable. No, that's not going to work, bro. And they're not going to want to come to work like that. They need to come to work in a scenario where they're like, if we fail, then I don't achieve my personal goals as mm -hmm. well. So therefore, I feel I fear failure. So therefore, I have to do the best that I can do. Uh, that's that's harder to do. Yeah. But I feel like that that's the road that I'm in in my life right now, like building a a, a company culture where people understand that they have something to lose. It's not just me. Mm -hmm. They are also going to lose. And I think the greatest companies in the world, they do an amazing job of that. You think like, like the guy from Apple, the industrial designer, Ive, Ives, Johnny Ives, I think it is. Yeah. You think he thinks that that's not him? But I'm sure he goes up every time. I don't think he works for the company anymore. I think he's a consultant now. But if you're an industrial designer, or you're the marketing head. That's your company. That's yours. That's fucking yours, man. You sit in that chair. You feel like it's yours. Everybody on that table, that's no longer you, Inc., it's now all of us ink. Mm -hmm. That's hard. That's that's the conversation me and you had the other day about the difference between uh, a single sole proprietorship, proprietorship and a, cor a corporation, corporation or a cooperation. The difference is understanding the motivations of people and getting all of their strengths to work in one favor. That's difficult to do. That's the reason why corporations work. Right, because that's an amazing thing to succeed at. Okay, you're you're amazing at content, right? Right. I see it. You're very very good at taking taking content and finding a way to monetize that. Right. That's your strength, bro. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's the truth. Right. So you may not be great at at company direction. Mm -hmm. That could be somebody else's strength. Running the actual business, mm. right? Or you may not be great at production. Like you do garment creations, you you sample, you show people. Yeah. But that may not be what you're great at, bro. Mm. You may not line up every shirt correct, cut every vinyl piece correct. True. You may not have the patience for it. True. Organize all the designs correctly. That, that may not be your strength. You get a guy like you in the room, a guy that can lead a company in the room, a guy like that's a production manager in the room, a guy that's an online. Now you have a cooperation wow. or a corporation. Now you have something. That's something else. That's why people hate cor corporations, but at the same time, they run the world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because they're a cooperation. It's, it's something else. I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question, bro. I, I think that fear is one of the, I mean, it's, it's one of the biggest motivators, fear and love. I think love has to be the stronger of the two. Mm -hmm. But fear is one of the biggest motivators in the world. Right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It gets people to vote. <laughs> it 
Yeah. Gets, gets them um, to make moves. You yeah, know? this is a business podcast. We're not going that direction, <laughs> boy. Business, business. Yes. This, yes. this is actually a lifestyle po- podcast. Yeah, so, yeah, so it is, man. Yeah. Just, 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 yeah, lifestyle. Just trying to have conversation that would better a lifestyle. What do you, you think? What, what do you feel like for you right now was one of the biggest challenges? Like, how do you ma- how do you manage? Let me ask you the question: How do you manage fear? How do you deal with fear? Because you started this company and like everybody's the spotlight is on you right so how do you how do you deal with that so managing fear for me it's basically some of the things you said it it motivates me to to go harder yeah because i have people that's depending on me that i don't have the opportunity to 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 fail or to be to be scared to make moves that would better up the situation for myself and anybody else that's looking at me and that's following me you know so when it comes to managing it, I I tell my wife all the time, it's very it's very hard for me to just sit here and stress on something because I know what I need to do to to make that thing better. You know, so it takes like it's a mentality thing. I feel with fear for me, it's it's a lot of people let they lose the battle in their minds first. It's like, yeah, fear, these four letter words, everybody say it, is da 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 da. I'm supposed to be scared. Yeah, it's supposed to, it's something that's like, I don't feel like, like to scare you where you go in the corner and cry. It's to scare you so you get up and make the move that you need to make. And that's how I look at fear. You know, let somebody tell me, hey, man, you got, you got 30 days to move out. Da, 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 da. You think I'm just going to sit in the corner and be scared? No, I'm going to spend those 30 days and see what I need to do to better that situation. Yeah. So that when that time come up, I'm in a better situation to move forward. It's fight or flight. Yeah. So I want to tell you one story real quick, not to cut you up, but one story. I'll try to make it short because sometimes I'm long winded. <laughs> so one story that I heard that I, it's amazing. So there's this general, right? General. He's, he's leading an army into battle, right? And they're all on boats and they're coming to shore. Mm-hmm. They get to the shore. He goes on the boats and lights them all on fire while the troops are on shore, of course, right? So they're like, what are you doing? How are we going to leave? He's like, we don't. Mm. They're, they're like, what do you mean? He's like, either we win or we die. Wow. Yeah. Fear is a fucking motivator, yeah. bro. Yeah. It is. If used correctly. If you, it, there's a, in a company environment, there's a thin line between motivational, baked into the cake, I'm going to lose. Mm-hmm. I need to do because I'm going to lose. And, I fear for my job every day. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't want to work like that. Bro. Right. I don't want to work like that. I want people. Honestly, if anybody in the organization feels like I fear for my job, I fear for, they're probably not. They're not the right fit. They're not. Yeah. And the company is not the, the right. Culture is not. It's not. Fitting. It's, it's both. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it's the company culture. And sometimes it's that person projecting that insecurity because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Mm. Right. True. So sometimes you got an employee. They know what the fuck they know what they're supposed to do. Right. They have like a job to do every day and they know that you're not checking in with them every five minutes. So they know that they're they're kind of skirting it, doing the very bare minimum. So they're always thinking, I don't want to get fired. I don't want to get fired. Right. But reality of it is, is you're sometimes you're the issue and the problem. Sometimes it's just the company culture, bro. You know, you're in the wrong organization. You're, you're not the right fit. Right. I feel like we've gotten so much better as a business about just saying like, look, it's not a good fit for you and for us. You know what I'm saying? It's true. I feel like that that has to be done like fast. You got to do it fast. Yeah. You know, don't like, waste their time. Don't waste your yeah, time. Yeah, That's the important part. It's yeah. like Radical Candor, Candor is a book that I had to read. My last job I had, it had all the managers read that book. It's basically how to lead people radically you know like basically not being around the bush and telling this person oh you're doing great you're doing great you know man you did so good at that false admiration right but then one day this person don't do something right all of a sudden you you like yeah you know what yeah the thing is time for us to part ways yeah radical candor like so all these years, all these months, you've been telling me I'm doing great. I'm not doing good. Yeah. I mean, but all of a sudden now you got to cut throat because I did this thing yeah. wrong already. So it's like, instead of just keeping those people around, 
you just got to get rid of them. Sure. And find someone else that can do the job to keep the keep the, the job moving. It's, and, it's mutually beneficial. Yeah. You're not happy either. No, you're uh, not. It's mutually beneficial. If you're at a job and you and you feel fearful every day, I don't know, bro. Like, who the hell wants to live yeah. like that, man? I can't imagine coming to work every day. Yeah, I'm going again. Yeah. Ugh. Shit, could this be my last day? Like, man. Come on now. Like, that's not... We're very, very fortunate in the United States. You know, we talked about us having the same, you know, story where we came from, We both came from Africa. Yeah. Right? So... We have so many options as employees in this country. You don't have to work for somebody. Like, don't. you will be okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tell them again. Honestly. Man, you will be okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. Uh, but will you be better off? And who's the, who's the real... You got to be self... You got to audit yourself. Mm -hmm. Who's the problem in this scenario? How many people are really doing that? Self-reflecting. I don't know. Right? Like, how many people step back and say, you know what? My manager's kind of like, he's an asshole, but you know what? I, I miss my deadlines. Mm. I don't get my shit done. It's kind of like I drag my feet. Right. I don't bring anything innovative to the table. Okay. Maybe he needs to be an asshole yeah. to get to you. Like, Takes two, right? Yeah. Or, you know, you're, you're in a, you'll always find something else, but you have to have some kind of self audit. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think I sit in a different, I sit in a very interesting place right now. I see it on both sides. So I think initially I only saw it one way or another, but now I see it on both sides. Wow. Employees have to feel like they're going to achieve their life goals, their personal goals, because business goals may not be a priority for them. Right. They may not want to build this mega thing. They may not want to do this, that, or the next thing. They may just want to buy a house. They might just want to buy a new car. Mm -hmm. They may want to get married and pay for their wedding and they, they're, those are the that's the level of ambition and that's fine also here's a common mistake that 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 business owners make we look at people's goals from a position from a bird's eye view okay so like for example i want to build a business that's my like i like i enjoy that that's my passion in life yeah right so yeah you, you you hire somebody and you start, they, they, don't, they don't share those ambitions, so you're quick to judge them. Why don't you think, why don't you build, why don't you, you I think the better question for me, move, you know, in my life at this point, is what the hell is your goal? Mm. What is it that you want to do, bro? Yeah. Right? You got to ask that. Yeah. So you want to create music? So you're creative? Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Well, we got a podcast. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Yeah. Right. I'll give me give me sixty percent of the time while you do this. I'll give you forty percent where you can do what you want to do, yeah. which is create music or yeah. create audio experience. Yeah. Right. You gotta you gotta find out what they're passionate. Find out what they're passionate about and and put them in that position, you know, and or build that within the business somewhere. And like when I was working for a corporation and all that, and every time I interview someone, always one of the questions, what are your goals yeah what do you see yourself in this company where do you see yourself in this company let me know what are you passionate about yeah and from those questions you'll find out like hey this might be like this is a software company but i'm not into writing codes yeah you know but i'm good at talking about the software so i mean i'm a good speaker or i can market this thing right but instead of you hiring this person to be that coder this person is good at this other thing. Yeah. Do you have the other thing now? Yeah. You don't. Yeah. All right. So how can you build that for this person to be comfortable? Because clearly there's value in, in this person. person. Yeah. You know, so we have to like. How do you mine it? Yeah. How do you mine it? Yeah. That, that's, that's my, that's, that's my level right now. That's where, you know what I'm saying? As a, as a, as a, as a, somebody that leads a company, that's the way I think right now. Mm. How do I mine that talent for the best possible application. Yeah. And then how do I make them understand that there's, there's mobility, there's a future. You have to show them those things. You do. And I don't care who they are. They want to know it. They want to know. They want to know that if they, if they work for a McDonald's, that they can become a manager. It's their growth in here. They want to know. They want to know. Growth. It doesn't matter who they are and where they're at their life. You just have to, 
I think your company culture has to project that mm -hmm. and also be smart enough to recognize when something, instead of instilling fear, when something is not working and where those people are best used, right? It starts with a conversation, man. You got to conversate with them. So you see the, the, the poster on the wall over there, right? Yeah. That's, um, that's from Apple's Think Different campaign. That's an original poster. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I've sourced that poster from that Think Different campaign because I, I felt like that campaign was so strong. Mm. You know, they really projected a brand image that people migrated towards. Apple as a technology company, what they did well was they appealed to the creative. They found a way to appeal to the creative in a in, in a way that was received well. You ever see the Think Think Different campaign ad? I'm, I'm not sure. Possibly. Yeah. So I, I watch. I'm I'm a nerd, bro. So I watch like different ads and stuff. Yeah. I watch like the best ads. Like which one? Which one was the most effective ad hey. in the world? Like I, I love that shit. That's man. how you gotta think because you want to implement. I love it, bro. I love it. So like I watch the ad on um like their number one ad is actually not that it's uh. The one where they're sitting in a stadium and it's the 1984, I think it is, where the lady throws the, the hammer into the screen. But he, the reason why I brought him up was he has a quote that says, if you judge a fish, right, if you judge a fish out of water by how it can walk or how it can run, who's wrong, the fish or the, mm. right? So I, I'm, I'm fucking the whole quote up. But the, the premise of the quote is it, a fish excels in, in the, the boat, water <laughs> not on the on the land right you know what i'm saying like don't judge a fish by how it can be eloquently speaking that's not what fish do mm. so if you're judging the fish in the wrong way who's the problem right that's the way i view things right now it's great yeah it's great it's hard bro it's yeah. alert it's, it's life man it's it comes with a lot of punches in the face bro a lot of set, setting expectations on people and them not not achieving those expectations, seeing the the overall like how good they can be or how great that they can be because I do that a lot. I project what I think that they're gonna be mm -hmm. instead of seeing who they are right now. That's hard. That's hard because business owners typically look at the future. Yeah, but they don't look at now. Like what are what is this person now? What are their goals now? now. Yeah, look at the now. Yeah, look at look what at they're the about now because they're gonna tell you, bro. Like the other day, me and you were talking about hiring mm -hmm. and how, you know, that that's not always the easiest thing. Right. Let them speak. They'll tell you everything you need to know. My my trouble is shutting my mouth long enough for them, for them to tell Let me them tell you, right? everything. But if you close your mouth and just give them the room to speak, just listen. they'll tell you. Yeah. They'll tell just you listen. everything, bro. Like they'll tell you what they like, what they don't like, if they're a good fit, if their moral, their value system works with yours or not. If they're trying to build or if they're just trying to job right now, I just want a job, right? Mm -hmm. If they say things like, I just want a job. Just want a job right yeah, now. Exactly. Don't want no commitment. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. used to get a lot of those. Like whenever there's an opportunity and you approach someone in the company, it's like, hey, man, I see that you're a great fit for this, man. Like I got this great management role. I think you'll be great in it. It's like, nah, man, E, I don't think that's for me, man. I just, I just want a job. Like I'm just here. I don't want no responsibility. I just want to come and go, you know, like I don't have the time. Like they would tell you. Are they useful, I mean, those kind of people or no? Are they useful? I mean, clearly, yeah, they're they're useful. They're definitely useful because the the fact that they were doing something so great that I seen the opportunity for them to move higher, they're clearly a use of where they're at now. They just don't see themselves as that. And most of the time you gotta make it you gotta make it as plain as possible to them. Yeah. Okay, it's just like showing people how to use the thing that we talked about earlier. You have to show them how they can be of value to this company or even themselves yeah. if they were to just step out of that comfort zone. I mean, it's a real scenario I'm speaking of. I had a dispatcher for the longest. I'm just like, this lady knew the system so well. I'm just like, but she lacked a little bit in confidence of herself and some leadership skills because she was so friendly with the people that she was leading so when there's time when it was time for her to actually step up and be their leader she struggled with that but that's why she was saying you know what i don't think it's right for me because she wasn't she's not able to manage that friendship 
and being their boss at the same time. So it's like, are they are they valuable? Yeah, they're valuable, but they don't know how to separate themselves from their the culture that they're in already being an employee or a crew member to them being a leader. The, do do you do you watch the 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 podcast Value Tainment? No, really good, really really good. It's like a it's it's a it's a video series, but it's yeah. also a podcast. Um, he, the guy had this person on there, <clears throat> and he's like a branding expert. Mm-hmm. Like a week ago, you're you're talking right now, and um, that just popped into my head, and I want to share this with you. He said, "There's four kinds of people. There's the hero." There's the guide, there's the victim and the villain mm. in a company. Okay. And each, every day you play a role in one of those people. <laughs> you play multiple roles. Sometimes. Right. Sometimes you're the hero. Sometimes you're the guide. Sometimes you're the victim. Right. And sometimes you're the villain. Mm-hmm. You're the bad guy when you got to fire somebody. Oh, yeah. You got to tell somebody something. Sometimes you're a victim when you're like, what? why don't they just do what they're supposed to do? I'm doing right by them. Mm-hmm. Play a victim as well. Right. So he said, the greatest role that you can play is is the role of a guide. Don't be the hero. Mm. Let them be the hero. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Let the customer be the hero. Let the employee be the hero. Let somebody else be the villain. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Make sure that they're not the victim. Right. But but don't be the hero. Let them be the hero. Be the guide. Guide them through that process of making sure like the, like the, the person that you're talking about. You said that she's really great, but she can't manage people because she know them too well. Yeah. I've had that happen too. So what you have to do is you, you have to be smart enough as a leader to take her out of that situation, put her a different shift where they don't know anybody. Because mm-hmm. you know they can do it. Right. They got it. That's funny. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. So That's they, exactly what happened. You know, instead of you working mornings where you're so comfortable now. Yeah. And initially, I hired you to do nights. So I know you're available to do <coughs> nights. Yeah. But now, yeah, and... Bro, it changed. Right now, she's the deputy operation manager in the company that I left. She's crushing it. Crushing it. Yeah. Crushing it because I broke her out of that comfort zone. Yeah. Switched it up on her. Yeah. She had to adjust. Yeah. So, I mean? So that, that that's a credit to you to being able to see that. Yeah. She had to adjust because I seen it. Yeah. You have to see it in them and put them in a the position that they can see it themselves. I have a staff member like that too, bro. This girl's a rock star. I don't want to name her by name right now. Right. I don't want to blow up her head too much. Somebody's gonna come try to try to try to I take one of my know. staff members or some crazy shit. But she's phenomenal. She's like I, I could tell right off the rip that she was very smart. Mm. She was very capable and cerebral. She would think, you know, about every scenario. So right off immediately, I was like grooming her to take a leadership position, and I don't think she was comfortable with herself in the role. But as soon as the dynamic changed within the room. She, you know, she started to really see what I saw in her. Right. You understand? But first I had to figure out whether or not that's what she wanted. Sometimes out of necessity, we put people in a position of, of our own necessity. Yeah. Like you want this person to be a leader. So you push them to be a, lead, a leader and then they end up disappointing you because that's mm-hmm. not what they want. bro. It's not. It's it, not. So they have to be okay with it. They have to want it. They have to want it. They'll have to want the responsibility and the, you know, the promotion that comes along with it. So I recognize that and I kind of put her in a different role and dynamic. And because of that, she flourished. Nice. Yeah. Thank God. Nice. You know, I, need, I needed her to flourish. Nice. So that was that was a win. But that doesn't always. Don't always pan out that don't, way, don't bro. Don't always fucking pan out, <laughs> Just bro. definitely don't, man. Yeah. Definitely don't. All right, man. Like, so we've been wrapping up for about an hour now so yeah. easy right yeah, like, yeah, yeah so easy yo this when is it's, fun when bro. it's value it is just yeah just, this is fun just going back and forth so what is just just to wrap it all up right to what is that thing that you would say to that young entrepreneur out there somebody that has that's just getting in the game they were just like at the hopefully at the research stage yeah you mean and they're ready to research. Right. <laughs> and they're ready to jump in. Yeah. Okay. And but like they they still they still they're still scared. They still don't want to throw their hands in the water. What is that one thing that you would tell somebody right now that once they hear this, they know they gotta get the hell up? Uh 
you got to be that guy in your life that changes your your world. Mm. Think about it, bro. Think about the people. I I I got into business for myself because I wanted to change my life trajectory. Nobody was changing it for me. You understand? Right. You want to be that guy. You got to be that guy. Yeah. You can't talk about being that guy. You got to get up and be that you gotta guy. Be that. You got to be willing to put up the hours and everything that takes that comes along with it. You're only going to live once. Mm. You can't do it when you're, you know, a certain point in your life. I'm not going to say age because I've right. seen people succeed at 60, at 70. So that that's no, but you have to have the health, the mental stability, the wealth, right? Like the, all of the things that you need in order to do it, you have a window of opportunity. That window is short. Mm. Stop waiting. Stop waiting. That fucking window is short. You only have a limited amount of time to get going. Don't think that that I had an economics professor once talk about like how the markets move. I couldn't get over it. Like I think it was my dyslexia. I couldn't get, get over it. He said, if you stand still, the, the world moves forward. That means you're behind. Hmm. I couldn't. I said, but I'm standing still. Right. What's the problem? It should, I'm still where I'm at. He's like, yeah, but you don't get it. The whole world just moved forward. Right. Hmm. So if you view life in that scenario you got the most to gain what are you gonna lose money right who gives a shit about that yeah honestly it, honestly i know that sometimes money is a big priority for people so they're like i can't lose i can't yeah but bro you, come on now let's keep it real how much money do you blow on dumb shit anyways mm -hmm. right Count, count them fucking coffees and <laughs> yeah, that's my scenario. <laughs> yo, count all the bullshit that we spend money on every, every day. day. You really worried about losing a couple thousand dollars? Yeah. Honestly, every day. Yeah, you blow. Come on now, put pen to paper and calculate your life expenses and figure out what discretionary money you're fucking off anyways. Mm -hmm. So you're worried about to lose that money. You're already giving it to the man. Why are you worried about that? You already blowing it. Mm. So why is that even? What fear do you have? Your fear should be you live the life uneventful. Wow. That's the fear. A mediocre life. A life that you didn't capitalize on who you are as a person. Right. Like, why is that not like your number one priority in life? A mediocre lifestyle. That's all I live. I lived a, a, a life unlived. Shit. That's the worst kind of life. Right. What did you do? What did you get done? What, what did you actually, what do you put your name behind? Nothing. That to me is the worst, bro. Wow. How? What is it? Lost money? Take that. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I feel like that. Think about you in 30, 40 years when you look back at your life. It has to be filled with beautiful memories of family and friends. See, this is the misconception, right? We're we on the Instagram wave now. Mm -hmm. Everybody's Snapchatting and Instagramming their burgers and cheeseburgers and hot dogs and whatever the fuck else they're, they're, right. they're Instagramming. They're, they're keeping track of all these things, but they're not accounting for one thing. What career fulfillment that you have? Because that's part of your calculation. I don't mm -hmm. care who you are. You must feel like, if you, even if you're a housewife, did you... Are your kids a rock star? Are they rock stars? Are they? Uh, what I'm, you, get what I'm, you get my point, right? Yeah. If they're not, you lived an uneventful life. That's a sad way to end the story. Right? Right. That's the kind of... that's You're painting your picture. It's not going to be on cheeseburgers on Instagram. It's going to be on what you did. Mm. What you did doesn't necessarily... You built a business. It could be like you raised amazing children. Wow. Right? Right. Or you helped feed homeless for 20 to 30 years. And you have like, you documented all these beautiful people that you helped. That's an eventful life, bro. Right? Or you changed the course of some child's life in your school. That he was going to be a, a criminal. Right. Be dead on the street. That's an eventful life. You, that, if living an uneventful life doesn't motivate you, I don't know what the fuck will. Mm -hmm. What will? Fact. I feel like Fact. that that's, that's kind of... My, my life goal, man, just to live a life that's a little bit more, <clears throat> I don't know, I, I, I feel like if you don't live a life that's that kind of life, then, you know, we wasted our time wasting on this earth. Time. Yeah. Wasting time, man. Yeah. Guys, that's it, man. Like, 
Stop wasting time out there. Get up. Live an eventful life, man. Definitely. Live an eventful life. So where can people find you at, man? Oh, uh, you can find me working. Working, I like that. <laughs> you can find you can find, you can find me in the lab cooking, the kitchen cooking, boy. Oh, man. Uh, uh, you can find me on capswag.com. Yes. You can find us on Capswag TV on YouTube. Nice. On Capswag USA on Instagram. You can find us at the stores cooking it up uh in Berlin, New Jersey down the shore. But uh I mean, you can find me. Not hard to find. Nah, hell no. This Just is a 21st century. Swag it. If you kept yeah. swagging it, you're finding him, you yeah. know? Yes. Yeah, so Yo, listen, before before we go, and I know we want to cut this down. Uh, uh I want to thank you again for coming down. Man, you already you're, know. You're a class act, bro. Real talk. You already know, I appreciate man. you educating me on this whole process and what it is. And I think we're gonna work, bro. We're gonna work. Definitely. We're gonna work. Yeah, there's no reason not to. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna work. We gotta make it work. Yeah, so do it. So, what do you think about the name? What do you think about that name I hit you with? I'm with it. You, you fuck with it? Yeah, yeah. I'm with it. The I hu- mean, you want to say it or you want me to say it? Go ahead, you tell him. It's the Hustle Man Podcast. Hustle Man Podcast, man. Yeah. So you've just listened to an episode of the Hustle Man Podcast. Yes. With yes. myself. Yes. E from Garment Creations. Yes. And my partner, my brother over here. Yes. Muhammad Ismail. Ismail. I got that Middle Eastern name. You ain't gonna forget it. <laughs> you ain't gonna forget it. It's that long ass name with multiple characters. Right. Muhammad Ismail. Ismail. Yes. 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 From yes. Capswag.com. Mr. Capswag.com. That's it. That's it. All right, y'all. So until next time, if you listen to this thing here, go ahead, like, subscribe, and rate us anywhere you listen to this podcast. Let us know where we can link up next time where else do we what what other topic you want to hear about let us know okay all right so next time we see y'all again peace peace so good that was great yeah that was great it was just a natural conversation bro i mean but this is how you cook shit up in the kitchen yeah right if you're in a studio and you're making music with somebody and this shit is uncomfortable you on the you the you in the wrong fucking room. That's true, right? Same thing goes for this or anything else. You have to be able to cook with that person. Mm-hmm. If you don't cook, you ain't got nothing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right, man. That was good. That was great. Yeah. That was good.